chapter 5, lesson 1, is the start of additional multiplication tables. So, in grade 2, the kids were taught to do tables of 2, tables of 5, tens, and then they had 3 and 4. So, they ended with that. In grade 3, they will now be given, or the lesson will start with tables of 6. So, my suggestion is before you start teaching your kids table of 6, you need to re-review them, the other tables. So, the first task is to have them do finger countings of 2, then 5, then 10, then 3, then 4. If they have time or if you have time, it's also ideal for them to write it down so it stays in their brain cells. Before you reintroduce the table of 6. So, again, when we teach table of 6, we teach them to count with their fingers. So, 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, 42, 48, 54, 60. So, it's ideal for them to do that together with the other multiplication tables. Okay. Also, since we're dealing with multiplication, we need to remember the number of groups, items per group, and total items. Okay, so this is a tool that I taught for grade 2. So if you are unfamiliar, we have readings on this as well. So the lesson for today starts with page 86. So on page 86, I selected two problems. So, number two says, there are eight cages. There are six hamsters in each cage. Question is, how many hamsters are there altogether? So, our tool will be number of groups. Items per group and total items. Okay, so the each is the same as the per. So, in this case, there are eight cages. That's your number of groups. And then it says each cage has six hamsters. And then the question is how many altogether, how many are there altogether of the hamsters? So, when we write our equation, it'll be eight times six equals question mark. Okay. Now, since the lesson is table of 6, we teach our kids to count by 6 until they reach the 8 fingers, which means our answer will be 48. Okay, the other problem I've selected is number 3. So, way back in grade 2, I've already said that this is counterproductive. Okay, but it's part of the lessons of the kids, therefore we must teach to the kids. So if you are homeschooling, I suggest that you skip this lesson. Okay, so problem number three says, what is seven times six? Okay, the goal is to come up with a problem that deals with the number closest to seven, that's between five between the numbers 5 and 10. So 7 is closer to 5 than it is to 10. So we start with 5 times 6. But since 5 is missing 2 more, we add 2 sets of 6. So if we do this, 5 times 6 will be 30 because it's easy to count by 5s. That's the logic. Okay, then we add 2 sets of 6 or 6 sets of 2. So that means that will be 12. Together, this will be 42. So when we multiply 7 times 6, that's 42. Again, I think this is just counterproductive. It's easy enough to just count by 6 until you reach 7 fingers. That concludes lesson 1 of chapter 5. See you in the next lesson.